This is this week's top stories from the MMA world. It has been a quiet week regarding fights. Sad news from MMAfighting.com. Ryan Jimmo was killed Sunday in a hit and run incident following a dispute with another driver. The former UFC light heavyweight was struck by a car while walking back to his own car early Sunday morning in Edmonton. According to multiple reports, he was rushed to the hospital where he was later declared dead. Jimmo was 34 years old. Jimmo's aunt, Sharon, confirmed his death with CBC on Sunday night. UFC president Dana White tweeted the sad news as well. Conor McGregor has obviously thought about his fight with Nate Diaz at UFC 196, and he, of course, fully believes that he can avenge the second round submission loss at UFC 202. The Irishman spoke Saturday at an event to promote his coach Joe Canavas' book, Win or Learn. Connor went into vivid details about the finishing sequence from March and how he thinks the next fight will go. McGregor, the UFC featherweight champion, also said flotation in weight played a major part in his performance against Diaz. McGregor brought in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist Dylan Dennis for his camp. Dylan Dennis is a well-known grappler and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt who competes for the Alliance Jiu-Jitsu Academy. The lineup for the UFC 200 is now complete. Fighting on the main card, Daniel Cormier versus John Jones for the undisputed light heavyweight title. And Mark Hunt and Brock Lesnar, a heavyweight super fight. Misha Tate versus Amanda Nunes for the women's bantamweight title. Jose Aldo versus Frankie Edgar, a fight which determines who's going to fight McGregor for the title next. And Travis Brown versus Cain Velasquez. Perhaps the most stacked card in the UFC history. Though Quinton Jackson looked sluggish and out of shape. Two judges thought he did enough to defeat Satoshi Ishii in the main event of Bellator Dynamite 2. However, pro fighters like Dave Dial and Ron Yako strongly disagreed on Twitter on the result. Uriah Faber is putting to rest any talk of retirement following his loss to Dominic Cruz at UFC 199. The 37-year-old who has amassed a 33-9 record in 13 years of professional fighting, wants to continue his fighting career after his most recent failed title shot. No, I am not going to retire, Faber told the MMAfighting.com. Chris Weidman has not been happy with the talk surrounding a potential bout between recently crowned middleweight champion Michael Bispin and Dan Henderson. Weidman and Bispin have been trading barbs on Twitter recently, starting with a tweet from the former champ accusing the Brit of looking to fight someone way down the pecking order. And finally, in the news today, George St. Pierre teased a move up to middleweight to challenge UFC champion Michael Bispin for his long awaited UFC comeback. But that isn't the only weight class in the sights of the returning welterweight legend. Time will show who's fighting Bisping next. Welcome! UFC new signings. Wow! We need to get to know you. Je Jessin? Yesin. Yes. Yesin. Ayari. Yes. That's the correct. Okay. You have. Uh, how has this uh, become a uh, reality for you? With uh, Joe Silva called, were you surprised? Um, I mean, it's not that I talk with Joe Silva directly. Of course, my manager talked with him. But it was like, it was not surprised because I know after my last fight, I have in my head, okay, maybe they call me. But if you get the call, of course, it's a surprise. So. It's like I was not so surprised before, but then when I get the call, I was, of course, super excited and I was happy 
But yeah, I knew it years before that I would fight in the UFC and now it happened, so I'm happy for that. Because you, this has been a dream for you from the beginning of your career, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. How did the rest of Germany react? Has there been a lot of reporters? Are you popular? Yeah, it's um, like a short story is um, when I start martial arts, I said, before I go to the gym, I said, one day I will fight in the UFC. Wow. And after this, I enter a gym and now the dream uh, come true. So it was not nothing like, oh man, my father is a sportsman or I grew up with wrestling or anything. I just start MMA and I say, I will fight for the UFC. Now I'm there. Of course, it, it comes um, becomes more popular now in Germany. I mean, Germany is not like in USA or not like in... Poland, Sweden, but it gets more popular and I was surprised that I get so much many calls from uh, different um, different reporters and interviews. I did a lot of interviews also in Germany, of course, because the event is in Germany in Hamburg, but um, yeah, it's 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 getting really bigger here. I don't know how is it in other countries, but it's getting much bigger. It's than huge. Before. Just, just in, you, you, you're going to get used to being a superstar now. So this yeah. is a really, a really awesome. But you <laughs> started, you, yeah, you started your career straight into MMA. You have no background for from kickboxing or. I was, I was a soccer player before. <laughs> so I, I would say sometimes I was, uh, if someone like uh, tries to foul me on the on the on the on the field i fight back but <laughs> i have no like martial arts background huh? i started with mma but it was not that big here in germany so I, that's why i started a little bit with like combat sambo a little bit yeah. kickboxing boxing and you know i start my grappling my first teacher was youtube so <laughs> that's awesome so you had no grappling teacher uh, when you started yeah no, and when I start now, now yes, but in my beginning, no, no teacher. <laughs> and you, you have a contract now for three fights, right? Yeah, four. Four, you get a four fight contract, that's yeah. great, that's good for you. And, uh, and your first fight now is in Hamburg. And uh, was that given to you at once or did you, uh, was, the, uh, was the UFC telling you, okay, you got a contract and you're going to fight in Hamburg or was it the first uh, UFC contract and then Hamburg? No, it was first the contract. The UFC called me and um, said, yeah, we want to sign you up. <laughs> and of course, in my, like, I was thinking, okay, of course, also because of their Hamburg card. And, but it, I was, I think it was first six or seven fights and all my friends asked me, man, do you fight in yeah. Hamburg? Do you fight in Hamburg? And I say, I think I fight, but I have no opponent now, and I don't know, man. I'm new in the UFC. I, I, I can I don't know. And they ask me every card. time, and then they, they, they say after like I don't know. I signed with the UFC, and one month away, they say, yeah, I fight in Hamburg. How do you feel to actually be? You're a new signing. You're one of the few UFC fighters in Germany, and you're on straight on the main card in Hamburg. That must be like. Uh, Christmas <laughs> all over again. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised a little bit of that because also my opponent, he signed up new with the UFC. But I think it's because the matchup and the fight, I know everybody's excited about this fight. Everybody say, I heard from a lot of people, yeah, uh, the main card, uh, the main event is cool. It's not bad, but I'm super excited of your fight. I'm super excited of that fight, two new signing, and that's, I think, of course, that's that's crazy that two new, like, we both sign new with the, with the UFC, and we're both on the main card, and our fight is so high, of course, because, also, of the opponent, because he, his last fight, he's get a lot of hype with them, but it's crazy, man, it's, but for me, it's that moment, I always dreamed about it and I say, yeah, when I start to UFC, I want to have a big fight. I don't want to start with, like, yeah. Well, this is a big fight. This is absolute, This is a fan favorite because I've been looking at your record and it seems like you're, you prefer submissions. Is that correct? Yeah, at the beginning, yes. <laughs> it's, 
yeah, I, I like I have my most wins. They come by submissions. But I'm an all-rounder. I started, like I said before, I started directly with MMA. So I'm. I was. I always said I don't want to be just a good grappler or just a good striker. I want to be in every aspect, in every area. I want to be perfect and not good enough. So I want to be perfect, and that's what I train for. Have you started to, to to figure out what kind of? Do you have a game plan right now? How are you going to defeat the, the Emil Valhalla Mech? He's a brawler, you know. He's a heavy hitter. Mm, I mean, of course, we have a game plan. We uh, we we watched his his fights. I just watched. I don't. I, I just watched two fights of him. Because it's like my my personal strategy is just the first uh, weeks just focused on me. Sometimes I watch this fight, but of course I saw his fight against uh, Paul Harris and uh, fights before. I got a game plan, but it's like you can plan everything before, and I have like a little bit of strategy. But in the fight, everything can happen, so I prepare for everything in every area. Yeah. And he's a, like you said, he's a powerful striker. He's a knockout artist, but I also think he's good on the ground. So maybe oh, he comes yeah. and shoots for a double leg in the first second, and I don't want to surprise that that surprised me. So I'm prepared for everything. Have you uh, have you uh, brought in any specific sparring partners for to to do the like copy Emil, or is it? Uh... Yeah, I mean it's it's. We, we talk with a couple of sparring partners and they will come. We, I have a couple of sparring partners, but it's not easy to um, yeah, copy the style of him because, you know, I have a lot of powerful guys, but they are more wrestlers. So if you if you see, see some guys like Emil, yeah. most of the guys are wrestlers. Yeah, they are like sure. super strong. But like my main training partner where I train years is also Jarjis Dano. He fights on the same card. He is super strong, he's a heavyweight, and he has unbelievable power, and I train with him, I don't know, since a couple of years. And we so that's the secret, that's the secret for, for your success, yeah, because you're sparring with a heavyweight all the time. Yeah. And that will be good. I with a lot of heavyweights also, and it was also last year, Alistair Overeem was in my gym, and wow. we sparred together. So I trained with a couple of guys, they have... I don't know, I cannot say something about Emil's strange, but he looks very powerful. But I have no problem with that because I trained with a lot of uh, heavyweights before. They are much stronger, I think so. It's normal because they are like 50 uh, kilograms heavier. <laughs> of course, this is, uh, this is some part... Uh, this is interesting for us because nobody knows where the, the dressing come from. But of course, when you, when you have been sparring with heavyweights, and you started with MMA uh, 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 right on and sparring with Alistair over him for sure. He's well known to, to, to uh, be a little bit uh, rough sparring partner. Is that true? Was he beating you up? Mm, no, I was also surprised because everybody said Alistair is a fucking beast in sparring. He tries to punch your head off <laughs> yeah. and kick your ass. But he was, I think he also made a mind changed you know, he said, yeah, back in the days, we spar really hard and we just go for no. And now he was really technical. I mean, he he has a perfect timing for knees. And I mean, he, he don't need to draw it hard. If you if he hits you with the knee, fuck, it's over. It's over. But he was really friendly, technical. And also after the sparring, I came to him like I always did when I have questions. I say, man, Alistair, can you show me like little bit of this yeah of course no problem and he was I was really surprised because I also thought man he's really arrogant and just it's a big star but I was it's really star, yeah right? he was surprised I was surprised he came and he, he he's not just spar and he, he, he showed me he teach me some little techniques some little details and he's perfect at it and it was really great that's good. That's good to hear. Have anybody? Uh, have anyone from the big teams like AKA Albuquerque or uh, somebody tried to sign you on? Um, no, not yet. But do you still see yourself uh, training and preparing from Germany from all your career, or do you see yourself moving like uh, Alistair did to 
to uh, Winkle John and, and, and to Albuquerque to develop. Yeah, you know, I was in a lot of gyms also. I was in a couple of gyms in the world where I trained with really good partners. But now in Germany, I built like my own base and I, I, have, my, I have a great box, boxing coach and he took me to, an, to the next level and he can bring me to also another level. And also have here, I um, train with the first division wrestlers from Germany and there are a lot of guys from Bulgaria, Cuba, so they're really good. I have a couple of black belts. I mean, it's not the same like in Albuquerque, maybe, but I have, but everybody's focused on me and it's also a, like a plus point because they focus on me and now I'm really happy. Of course, I, I need to bring sparring partners from other countries. They come and train with me, sparring partners. But for the training, I'm good. But I don't know, in years, maybe I say, hey, I go for the next training camp yeah. to another place. But I will take my team with me because we, like I said, my boxing coach and me, now like we train since three years together, since my last loss, we trained together. And now, you know, at the first, I always say, ah, okay, get I'm better or not better. Mm -hmm. But now it's the time I feel, oh man, I'm getting so much better. Every day I get so much better. And it's, that's the result of uh, hard work and also believe in my trainers and stay with them. And that's the Conor McGregor recipe. You know, he, yeah. uh, he, 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 he basically showed everybody that stay loyal to your to the guys that brought you where you actually are. So this is the same message you say. You want to stay with the same guys that brought you there and you think that's going to bring you... If, like, I, I think if I have the feeling that I cannot be better, then you need to change something. Of course. But for me, I have lost in my career before and I learned so much from the lost and then make me so strong what I am now right now because I now after every victory I'm not getting uh, to make party getting drunk I think about my fight uh -huh, what what I did what I feeling in the fight what I can do better because I learn it about um, of my loss so that's now and I have now a feeling when I if something is not good enough I change it but of course I'm loyal to the people who helped me out but I need to bring also new guys here and new sparring sponsors. I visit, uh, travel around the world also, train in other places. That's martial arts, yeah. That's martial arts. Uh, Jesse, what, what's, your, uh, uh, what's your weight issue? Do you have to drop a lot of weight in front of the fights or what, what are you walking around in? I'm walking around with like 87 kilograms, okay. 86, 87. So not that much. It's, it's, it's okay. and. My weight cut is, man, over the years, it's getting easier, easier. I have, I started um, my welterweight career with, like, I was 76 kilogram and I fight 77. Then I get 80 kilogram, I fight 77. Now I'm 87, but it get, gets easier because I have, I know my body better. Yeah. I know um, better of nutrition, what I eat in fight week and the weeks before. So I feel perfect every time when I do weight. That's so for good. me, there's no problem to cut weight. For, for the fans, are you a married man? Do you have kids or are you... How is your normal day-to-day -day life? Like my normal day is... Yeah, my, my girlfriend, he sleep <laughs> on the other room now. <laughs> he goes to work later. But I have a girlfriend. I'm not... Uh, I have no kids, but mm. a girlfriend since a couple of years. And yeah, but we're not married. Not yet. Now, are, are you are you like uh, do do you work or, or do you, of course now MMA is filling your whole day. I hope. But do you have any uh, do you work any places before? Are you a teacher, a doctor? Yeah, or? I was I was working in, as a an auto me a car mechanic. Oh yeah. But it was from 15 years old to 18. I make I know in Germany I do like the basic. I don't know to say it in English. Like the, um, we learned three and a half year in the job, and then we are in the job and can work there. So I learned um, auto mechanic. But after this, I was like the first year. It was, it was cool. It was interesting. And after this, I start MMA, and then just MMA was interesting. And it was the last year. I was just I was because I train every day. 
I, I'm, I'm trained every day, every day, and then I was always uh, tired in my work. I slept. Mm. <laughs> it's heavy place. work, yeah. It's heavy duty. Yeah, just, just training, and after the work, I said, yeah, that's my, that's my, man, that's my reason where I'm here in this world now. I need to fight. I'm an MMA fighter. <laughs> and cool. then I started uh, to do uh, MMA, t train twice a day. And yeah, but sometimes at, at the beginning I worked in some clubs as a bouncer. Then I worked, uh, now I worked sometimes like every month, one, two days as a, um, like um, on like Oktoberfest, you know Oktoberfest? From yeah, 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 we know the beer drinking, yeah. um papa yeah. <laughs> stuff, yeah. So it's, it looks funny <laughs> because I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat meat, but I work there. But it's it's like a good job because you earn in a in in a short time a little bit more money, and it's it's then enough to to get some something to eat. But the last years I was not working. I just fighting and try <laughs> to get my food and try to. <laughs> but you ended up in the UFC now, so the, it paid off. It paid off. And how are you regarding to, uh, to um, are you going to try to sell the fight with Emil? Do you, ha do you have like some trash talk or do you want to have some heat between the fights or do you want to keep it smooth and professional? No, I keep it. I mean, like my father always said to me, never start, by all, by, but always bring it to the end. So I never start. I don't want to start trash talking. I don't, I don't know Emil. Maybe he's a cool guy I don't know him so I cannot uh, start uh, trash talking but yeah when he start I will not uh, sit there and say oh yeah cool cool of course but uh, now I'm um, take it professional I train hard and we will see in the fight week when we meet each other like I said man I I don't know him so I cannot uh, say something about him right now about his like character I don't know him so I have so much fun in the gym we always make fun I'm I'm, I'm the guy who, who, like, who trains really hard, and I'm, but I'm, I'm always funny, you know. When I'm in the gym, I said like the gym is like my, 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 like, like my temple, you yeah. know. When I go there, I feel free, free, and it's the same when I go octagon, I feel free. So for me, is there anything can happen? But when I'm in the gym, I feel free, I feel good. And that's why I'm always, uh, everybody say, man, you're always happy in the gym. You're always happy, you have fun. I say, yeah, because that's, that's, man, I mean, at, the, at one point it's my work, but at the other point it's, it's fun. It's just what I, it's, it's fun. I love it. I love it every day to train, to train. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm a funny guy in the gym. <laughs> Maybe it will be the funny guy. <laughs> you're always happy and it's so, yeah, hey, I'm so happy to see you're so glad and uh, finally you reached the UFC and I'm very, we really appreciate you, you, uh, you talking to us and we will of course call you again when the, when it's, uh, when the time is, is closing up to, to, um, to the, the Hamburg card and please, Jasin, stay uh, safe. And no Oktoberfest now. <laughs> no bouncing. <laughs> so stay safe. Because we're really looking forward to, to see you fight. Yeah, of course. Of course. Then we're going to end there. Do you have any final words to the fans? Or the Norwegians or whatever? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm pretty sure that a lot of Norwegian fans will come uh, to, to Hamburg. Because from my city... I think it's the same way <laughs> that from Norway, I, I fly it also one hour and a little bit more and I think it's the same from, from Norway and yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy, excited about my opponent, it's the perfect opponent for me, really it's the perfect opponent, I'm really happy about it and yeah, we will give the fans a good fight and they will never forget the night in Hamburg, they will say, oh man, after the fight they will say, hey Hamburg, Wow, it was really cool. It was really cool, cool city, and the fighters are so good. And yeah, I hope the yeah there will be a good crowd. And, uh, also from the Norway fans, I was in UFC Sweden, and it was crazy. I was crazy. And I, 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 I was there cool. as well. So it was crazy. So I welcome so. everybody in Germany. They can come. Everybody welcome and support their their hero, of course. 
but it's also for me a support when they cheer for for him it's also for me a cheer because i know okay man i'm i'm here this the fight the people are here for our fight so yeah see you there <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to interview you in Hamburg and to come to your wonderful city because you st your your home city is Hamburg also. No, I'm from Nuremberg. You're from Nuremberg? It's, yeah, it's in the south. The racing course. Oh man, with the car you need six and a half hours. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah, so that's a little bit too much. Okay, Justin, we have to end it up. I, I really appreciate this. This was great. So uh, stay safe and no bouncing and uh, keep on. We, we were looking forward to see you fight. And that was uh, Jesse Nayarin. He was a really nice guy and he's been training MMA from scratch. He's been training with heavyweights for a long time and uh, his fight against Emil Mek is starting to make me interested as a Maybe a really tough bout for both of them. So thank you very much. And uh, this is it for the MMA studio. And see you next week.